In this video, we're going to apply the technique of differential interferometry to map deformation following a volcanic eruption. And we will do that with a Sentinel-1 single-look complex imagery. The imagery includes two single-complex Sentinel-1 scenes. And if we expand the bands folder, we will see that we have complex bands for each of the swaths of the interferometric wide swath product. So here we have the, the complex bands and we also have uh, a virtual intensity band which is created on the fly. And we have two products, one acquired on the 3rd of November 2014, the second on the 27th of November. And if we look at a map of the world, we can see where these images were acquired over an island volcano off the coast of Africa. If we look at one of the virtual intensity bands, we can see that there are a number of bursts within each of these swaths. Okay, so the volcano island is situated on two of these bursts. So the first thing we will do is only take one subswath and the two bursts within this subswath and we'll discard the rest of the image to increase the speed of the processing. We go to radar, central one tops, central one top split. And here in processing parameters, we can zoom in using the scroll wheel of the mouse and the right mouse button to pan. We can see the various different swaths. We will take IW3, which covers the island volcano, and we'll take the bursts one to two. So we can select the burst by, uh, by left-clicking on this button here and dragging to include only bursts one to two. And then we will select in the IO parameters tab a suitable output file name uh, we will remove some parts of the file name and keep only the image acquisition date and time of the start of image acquisition. And we will select Run. And then we will do the same for the second image. Okay, then we can close this window. And here we have our two split products. The interferometric processing chain involves a number of steps. First, we will apply orbit files in order to obtain very precise orbits for each of the images. Then we will co-register the two images in such a way that the pixels exactly correspond to each other. After that, we can compute the interferogram by multiplying one image with the complex conjugate of the other. We will also calculate the interferometric coherence. After that, we will subtract the phase due to the topography in order to have only the phase due to the displacement. We will then filter that phase and then we will Geometrically, geometrically correct the product and then overlay that onto an image in Google Earth. So the first step is to apply orbit files. We go to radar, apply orbit file. And here in the processing parameters, we will leave everything as default. And we will select run. And we'll do this for both the products. So here we have the products with the updated orbit files. 
So the precise orbits are available some days after the image acquisition, when more precise orbits are calculated. Now we will do the co-registration. The co-registration for the TOPS mode includes two steps. We have the back geocoding and the enhanced spectral diversity, so we'll do one at a time. Essentially, these, both these steps will ensure the images are very precisely co-registered, and that involves use of the orbit information and also carrying out a cross-correlation. So we select back geocoding. Here we can select the plus icon to add all the inserted products, but we will remove those which we will not co-register. So we, only, we will only co-register the images with the orbit files included. So we will remove all other files. So here we have the, the images with the updated orbits, and we will co-register those two products. And we can remove the file name, the acquisition date, and then we can select run. Okay, now we will apply the enhanced spectral diversity. Here we will leave everything as default. And we'll select run. Once we have done this, we'll have very precisely co-registered imagery, which is essential for carrying out interferometry. So here we have the, the two images co-registered. We can double click one, and here we see only the two bursts. And here's the second one. Okay, so this has been, this is a slave image that has been mapped, that has been resampled onto the master. Now we can compute the interferogram. So we go to radar, interferometric, products, interferogram formation. And here we can leave all as default. And we select run. So here we have our interferogram, and the interferogram is in the phase band of this image. So if we close all other Im viewers, and if we open uh, this phase, then we will see here the fringes, the interferometric fringes. Each color cycle here corresponds to a complete phase difference. If we open also the intensity and the coherence, and we compare them together, we can see that in the coherence image, there are some areas where you have high coherence and other areas where you have very low coherence. And in the areas of very low coherence, we do not see clear fringes in the interferogram. Only in the areas of high coherence do we see these clear fringes. What we will now do is a deburst to remove this gap between the bursts. So we go to radar, Sentinel-1 tops, Sentinel-1 tops deburst. And here we can leave all as default and select run.
So we can close these viewers. And if we look at the interferogram, we can see that the product has been debursed. What we now do is we will remove the fringes due to topography. Because the fringes are due to topography and displacement. And if we remove the topography, then we're left with the displacement. And we do this by calculating the fringes from a DEM and then removing those fringes from this interferogram. So we go to radar, interferometry, products, topographic phase removal. And here we can use the, SR, the default SRTM 3 arc second DEM to calculate the synthetic fringes and remove them from the interferogram. So we'll select our debursted product and then we select run. So here we have the differential interferogram and we can open that here And if we compare the interferogram and the differential interferogram, while in the interferogram we see a clear cycle of fringes from the bottom of the volcano, in the differential interferogram we see fringes that do not appear to only follow the contours of the volcano, but we see more fringes in a certain part of the volcano. And if we open this band here, this image band, topo phase, we can see the topographic fringes, the fringes due to the topography that have been calculated from the DEM. This differential interferogram, and the interferogram itself as well, is quite noisy. And a common step is to do a phase filtering. A filtering will reduce the noise and it will help uh, with the unwrapping of the interferogram. So we go to radar, interferometric, filtering, Goldstein phase filtering. So the Goldstein is one algorithm for doing the phase filtering. And here we leave everything as default and we select our differential interferogram and we select run. So now let's compare the filtered and the non-filtered phases. So here we have our filtered phase and here we have our non-filtered phase. So we can see that the filtered phase is much cleaner. The next step will be to do a geometric correction of this image. But first we will take a subset because we have a lot of no data values around the image here where we have masked out the sea. And we're interested only in this island. So we will take a subset of this island. So we will go to raster, subset, and here we will select a subset only of this small area. So here we have our subset. And now we will go to radar, geometric, terrain correction, 
range Doppler terrain correction. And in the processing parameters tab, we will select only the phase, so the, the differential interferogram, and the coherence. And then in the input output parameters tab, we will specify a file name, which we will leave with the default underscore TC uh, terrain corrected suffix. And then we'll select run. And we can close this. And now here we have the differential interferogram and the coherence in two separate bands and terrain corrected. What we will now do is to overlay these onto Google Earth. So we right click in the image and we select export view as Google Earth KMZ. We'll leave this uh, as default and we will click save to create a KMZ file. So here we have the, in the differential interferogram as a KMZ file, and now we'll do the same with the coherence. So we right click and we select export view as Google Earth KMZ. And now we can double click on these to open them in Google Earth. So here we can see the differential interferogram overlaying. And we see the dense uh, fringes corresponding to deformation. So the denser the fringes, the greater the deformation. And we see that the fringes are over this part of the volcano. We do not see such, such dense fringes elsewhere. We have here the cone of the volcano. This displacement corresponds to the collapse of the, of the crater following the eruption. And the, uh, the fringes here, corresponding to the displacement here, are due to the lava, so the, the increased height from the lava flow. So here we have positive displacement and here we have negative displacement. And if we look at the coherence, so now let's open the coherence image. So here we see we have high coherence over these parts and we have very low coherence here. And if we, if we compare the coherence image with the optical image, we can see a lot of green here. So this could be forest, where the volume scattering would cause loss in coherence. Whereas elsewhere we have a different kind of terrain, which may be more stable, and where we would have higher coherence. We could go further and calculate the precise displacement from the differential interferogram. This would require first phase unwrapping, and then conversion of the unwrapped phases to displacement. SNAP itself cannot do the phase unwrapping, but this can be done by other software, such as SNAFU, which is also a free software. And SNAP can then import the unwrapped phases from SNAFU and continue to calculate the uh, displacement from those unwrapped phases. I hope it was interesting. Thank you for watching.